Welcome into the 49ers Report by Chat Sports. I am your host, as always, Chase Sr. Coming up on today's show, we're going to preview this pivotal Sunday night football matchup between the San Francisco 49ers and the Green Bay Packers. The home opener for the 49ers. Fans going to be on hand at Levi Stadium in Santa Clara for the first time since the 2019 season. Niners going into this game as three and a half point favorites. The over under set at 49 and a half. I think I'm going to gas the Niners at minus three and a half. I think they have the advantage over Green Bay in multiple areas, which we'll break down here in just a bit. And if you want to gas the Niners, you can do so in the comment section right now. Predict the score for the Sunday night football game between two of the top teams in the NFC, both of these organizations with Super Bowl aspirations. Get those score predictions in in the comment section right now. Before we break down this game, shout out to today's sponsor, BetUS. If you want to bet on the Niners, there's no better place to do it than our sportsbook partner bet us go to chatsports.com slash 49 bet enter the promo code niners 125 you get a 125 percent deposit bonus now i love wagering on football games week one i went four and one against the spread during our college games on saturday i went five and two but i got my ass kicked against the spread on sunday in the nfl i went over so if you want to give me your five best bets in the comment section, do so right now. We've been keeping tallies of our chat sports standings. I'm only a couple games away in the win column from overtaking Thomas Mott, who's currently in first place, Matthew Peterson in second, followed by Marshall Green, Tom Downey, Mitchell Renz, producer Jack Lauderay. He's an even five and five on the season, and before couple weeks ago he had never wagered on a football game in his life to be 500 he hasn't lost any money that's pretty damn good then you see me tied in ninth place at four and six I can improve on my record and I think I'm going to do so with a hot week this week I'm taking the Niners minus three and a half more chat sports standings for you Sam Brown Brett Scott Trace Gerard Jeffrey Cooperstein and what you don't want to do is go 0 for 10 who you don't want to be is my boy Harrison Graham. Ofer throughout the first two weeks of the season. Going 0 for 10 is about as impressive as going 10 and 0. I'm not sure how it's mathematically possible to be that bad. Help my boy Harrison Graham out in the comment section by giving us your five best games. And let me ask you this. Do you want a free 49ers jersey? We are extending this deal for you. You can get a free 49ers jersey by going to chatsports.com slash 49bet, enter the promo code Niners125, you sign up, you get that deposit back, you place a bet, then you email us jersey at chatsports.com. Let us know that you followed all of those steps, and once you do that, we'll get in touch with you. We'll send you a free 49ers jersey, thanks to our friends at Fanatics. All right, without further ado, let's preview this Sunday night football game, Aaron Rodgers Coming into his home state of California, he's from the Northern California area, and after a disastrous week one loss against the New Orleans Saints, in which that Packers offense was straight up inept, Aaron Rodgers and the Pack able to rebound on Monday Night Football against the Detroit Lions. Aaron Rodgers was very good in that game, very efficient, 22-27, 255 yards, four touchdowns to no picks. But let me ask you this, Niner gang. Does San Francisco own Aaron Rodgers? According to the numbers, the answer to that question is a resounding yes. Here are Rodgers' splits against San Francisco. 1-4 and four at Levi Stadium. He's 0-3 against the Niners in the playoffs. And that was all highlighted in the 2019 campaign when Aaron Rodgers and the Packers got straight up smacked by the 49ers in two games, once in the regular season, another time in the NFC Championship game in Santa Clara. Straight up dominated. And I think that result and that previous history is going to translate to Sunday night's game. Why is that? I think the Niners have an edge in multiple areas, as I mentioned, especially when it comes to physicality. And under Matt LaFleur, the Packers the last two years have really struggled against physical teams. What's the bread and butter for the Niners, especially on the defensive side of the football? It's being physical at the lines. And offensively, at the offensive line spot, I think the Niners had the physical advantage over the Green Bay Packers as well. Now let's focus in on the Green Bay Packers offensive line because I think the Niners have a great opportunity to dominate this ball game with their defensive front, which has been great. And I mean great throughout the first two weeks of the season. This is a very inexperienced 
Packers offensive line that's going up against a Niners defensive line that is star-studded, very experienced, lethal, and deep. Elton Jenkins started against Detroit. He's only in his third year. John Runyon is only in his second year. Then you have two rookies, Josh Myers out of Ohio State, Royce Newman out of Ole Miss, two draft picks for Green Bay, who are rookies. And then Billy Turner has been a journeyman. He just got the bag recently. He's in his eighth year. He's the elder statesman at right tackle for Green Bay. But the overarching theme here, inexperienced and guys who are not proven against a Niners defensive line that is proven and is very stout. Throughout the first two games, I've been so impressed with what the Niners have done from a generating pressure standpoint. They had 30 defensive line pressures in week one against the Lions, and that theme continued in week two against Philadelphia. Eric Armstead is second in the league behind Max Crosby at pressure rate, so he's getting home a lot. He had six pressures against the Eagles on Sunday. Nick Bosa had two sacks with three pressures. Javon Kinlaw, it was great to see him back in the lineup. He had two pressures. So too did Arden Key, who ranked as one of the best defensive linemen, according to Pro Football Focus in Week 2. And then D4 continues to come back off those neck and back injuries. That is such a positive sign for D4 to be looking healthy. So I think the matchup here can be exploited by the Niners defensive front, and I give them the edge. So with that, I ask you this question. How many sacks on Sunday Night Football in front of a national audience that's going to be worldwide as well will the Niners have against that offensive line that I think has holes? Give me a number in the comment section right now. Let me pivot to my keys to the game. There are several of them. Moving off my talking points, Niners have a golden opportunity to really dominate the line of scrimmage offensively and defensively. I think that's how this game can be won. Devontae Adams showed out against the Detroit Lions in week two. And with this Niners secondary suffering a lot of injuries, being somewhat thin, they got cooked with some deep plays in that first half against Philadelphia. They're going to have to shadow Devontae Adams. Jimmy Ward and Jaquaski Tart are going to have to be playing kind of overarching coverage there on Devontae Adams to limit the big plays. I'd like to see the Niners also be more consistent on offense. Throughout the first two weeks, they have not played a full 60 minutes. And when Kyle Shanahan is your head coach, the wizard that he is, I'd like to see them put together a full game and in this NFC West division which I think is the best in football it's a straight up gauntlet all the teams combined have only lost one game it was the Seahawks against uh, the Tennessee Titans on Sunday you have to stack wins in a stacked division that's why it was so big for the Niners to win ugly on the road in Philly starting off the season 2-0 and with back-to-back -back road wins you can't take that lightly. And then Debo Samuel against Jair Alexander. That is my big matchup to watch on Sunday. Debo's been one of the best wide receivers throughout the first two weeks. And Jair Alexander, you can make the argument, is one of, if not the best cornerbacks in the National Football League. Speaking of the Sunday night football game, we'll be doing another watch party right here on the 49ers Report. We'll be going live 8.05 p.m. Eastern, 5.05 p.m. Pacific, doing a watch party right here on the 49ers Report. A massive success doing our watch parties the first two weeks of the season. More than 70,000 people joined us in week two. More than 60,000 people joined us in week one. Come join the party. You're invited. Smash that subscribe button and let's have a party. As for Devontae Adams, I talk about that big game against the Lions. Man, he went off. He was targeted nine times by Aaron Rodgers, pulled down eight catches, 121 yards, average yards per catch at 15. As for Debo Samuel, he's been about as good as Devontae Adams the first two weeks of this 2021 campaign. Nobody's been able to stop him. He's been so good with his route running, which I think he has refined. Those lingering injury issues, soft tissue stuff, they haven't surfaced at all. And we know that Debo Samuel is the yak king, as evidenced by the numbers. 15 receptions through the first two games, 282 yards, average yards per catch, an elite number at 19. He's picking up a first down and more. Every time he touches the rock, he's a home run threat and one touchdown. Predict the score in this game for me. Niner gang, between the Niners as well as the Green Bay Packers. Get those score predictions in in the comment section. And if you want to lay some lettuce on this game, chatsports.com slash 49bet. Enter the promo code Niners125. You get that 125% deposit bonus. And if you follow all of those steps that I broke down earlier, we will send you a free 49ers jersey.